It's great to see so many of you here. You know, I walked in the hall yesterday and I said, how many folks are you going to hold? They said, not very many, about 3,500. I swallowed. I said, 3,500? Then I realized that's not nearly enough. Because if there's one disease that touches everybody in this country, it's diabetes. And if there's one disease that needs the cooperation of everybody in the healthcare field, it's diabetes. So yes, it's great that you're here. But every physician in America should be here. Every nurse in America should be here. Every reporter in America should be here. But then I wouldn't have the exclusive so they can stay at home. It's okay with me. By the way, you know, Will Rogers once said that when he ran out of material, what he would do before going on stage, just back in the days of the Zigfield Follies, is he'd pick up the paper, read the folks what the Congress had done that day, and the folks would die laughing. Said he wasn't a taxpayer then, but now that he was, he understood it. So I did that this morning. Did anybody see the New York Times this morning? Yeah, if you did, you were as shocked as I was. There was an article by Gina Collado, who's a terrific health care reporter, and it's headlined, Health Plan That Cuts Costs Raises Doctors' Ire. I said to myself, it's cutting costs, and it's doing good things for patients. Why is it raising doctors' ire? You know why? It's using you. It's using nurses. It's sending diabetics, patients with heart failure, out into the community where they can get help, sorting through a shoebox full of 20 medications. Someone comes to their home and said, here's what you're taking, here's what you shouldn't take. We're going to call the doctor's office and talk to them about it. The doctors were also communicating using email. And you know why the doctors didn't like it? Office visits were down and their incomes fell about $2,000 per practice per year. I'm going to read you one quote and then I'm going to get on to what I want to talk to you about today. Because I could say some choice New York phrases about this. It just made me angry. New Yorkers would say pissed off, but I would never say that. Here's, here's a comment by a doctor. He said, quote, let's say you do a really good job of keeping somebody out of the hospital, or let's say you spare someone a physician's visit, you save the system money, but nobody benefits from the savings. Unquote. What planet does this guy live on? I'll tell you who benefits from the saving. Let's think for a minute. Could it possibly be your patient? The hell with them. You know what you're doing. You know how to take care of people. You know what people need. Keep it up. The more guys like this one in the article that you just tick the hell off, the better I like it, the better this country is going to be, and the cheaper health care is going to be, the better your patients will do. And isn't that what we're all here to talk about today? Well, as you heard earlier, diabetes is not just about sugar anymore. I got to small hint for you, it never was. Diabetes is manifested by high blood glucose, that's how it was figured out. You all know that diabetes mellitus means sweet urine. What, what incredibly courageous or idiotic person actually tasted it to figure that out <laughs> is beyond me and I don't really care. Somebody's done that research, done. <laughs> I'm not going there. But what you also realize is that diabetes is a disease which affects every organ in the body. No organ more so than the heart. I'm here to tell you today that we have evidence in hand, off-the-shelf technology, that when applied to diabetics in particular, and that means when applied to your practice in particular, can actually end the risk of premature death due to heart disease and heart attack in this country. Think about that for a minute. We're going to turn heart attacks off before they start. Your diabetic patients will no longer keel over from heart attacks at 40 and 50 and 60, perhaps with 20 or 30 or 40 more years of active, productive life in front of them. They'll be able to see their kids, their grandchildren, their great-great-grandchildren, and who's going to bring this advance to them? Not the docs who claim that by doing more efficient and better health care, it's going to cost them money. It's going to be the people out in the field, the people who bring this innovation to the patients and the people who do it in a cost-effective way.
the people who actually care about retail medicine not wholesale medicine who do it one patient at a time one day at a time who get the great satisfaction out of keeping people healthy and seeing sick people get better and to the best of my ability that describes everybody in this room <clears throat> well what exactly are we talking about and why is this such a big innovation let me start by telling you something that you may not know up until about five years ago we and by we I mean everybody and specifically the MDs of America didn't have a clue not a clue what caused heart attacks deathly silence it's true I mean I'll tell you what I was taught in medical school back when pterodactyls flew through the air Dinosaurs roamed the earth and we were waiting for this giant meteorite to change the world. Back then we were taught that heart attacks were really, really simple. <laughs> right. Here's what happens in a heart attack, they said. You're bad. Notice it's the blame the patient philosophy, step one. That's always the first lesson in medical school. It's always the patient's fault. You know better. Those patients are just not doing what we're telling them to do. They're not exercising, they're eating too much cholesterol, they're not controlling their high blood pressure, and because they're eating all this stuff and not doing it right, their arteries are filling up with junk. Gradulatious gradu, one of my professors called it, and that this stuff was pooching down into the lumen, the hole in the middle of the artery, and that the blood, which was supposed to feed the heart, couldn't get past the obstruction. And over the years, this gradu got bigger and bigger, sort of like the pipes in my house. I just renovated, I had a look. I won't look again, it's too scary. And then when it finally got down to a critical obstruction, bang! You had a heart attack, you did a face plant, you were dead, bill Medicare, send in the next one. Well, even then, if we thought about it, we should have known that was hogwash. Why? Because heart attacks are not a chronic disease. Under that scenario, a heart attack is the end point over here of what began over there with just a little obstruction. So what should have happened over here is here's your gradulatious gradu, obstructing, obstructing, obstructing. Eventually the heart gets a little less oxygen than it needs and it hurts a little bit. So that's angina. Then over here, it gets a lot less blood than it needs, so with even less exertion, you get angina. Over here, there's almost no blood, but the heart still needs blood. That was called crescendo, or unstable angina. Wham! Heart attack. But that's not what a heart attack is. A heart attack is not a chronic disease. A heart attack is not the end stage of angina. A heart attack much more commonly is you're out there playing tennis notice my wrist is not stiff enough I play tennis badly and one day with no warning at all boom you arrest or you're playing golf you feel funny an elephant is sitting on your chest suddenly you're in VTAC a bad thing to have on a golf course unless of course you followed some of the recommendations lately and there's a defibrillator in your golf cart don't laugh, this is coming. The automated defibrillators with those little computer brains, you've seen them. Take patients, clothes off, put pads on. Sometimes they don't go to the step two and things get weird. But that's a heart attack. It's not chronic angina going to doom and death. It is an attack. Now, if a heart attack was always due to this gradu in your arteries, riddle me this, Batman. Why is it that when we do cardiac caths on heart attack victims, 50% of the time we see no plaque? You can look it up. 50% of the time there is no plaque, no significant plaque in any event, inside the lumen of a heart attack victim. This is true. That blows your theory right out of the water. I was trained in physics, you know. If you get a theory and you think it's right, you find one exception to your theory, your theory is wrong. Just dead wrong. 